In this lesson, we're going to take a quick dry run through a solvent weld, and then I'm going to show you some videos that I've recorded out in the field of some repairs that I've done, and that'll kind of help you get a good visual impact about how this happens and how I like for it to happen. You know, we've got the two parts of the weld. We have our pipe and we have the fitting. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our um, primer, okay, tap a little bit of it out inside the can, like I said before in a previous lesson. We don't want to be slinging this primer everywhere, uh, compromising other joints, getting it all over the pipe because it does soften the pipe up. So you go around several times. I like to make sure that I properly go over it with the primer because really what we're trying to do is eat away this outside layer of pipe and properly prepare the PVC for the weld. Do the same thing inside of the uh, fitting. Uh, put your primer in here, wipe it around, um, and always go back and look, whether it's on the pipe or it's down inside the fitting, that you don't have a puddle of primer that's sitting there undried, um, and you've got some, some maybe that'll drip off the bottom part of the, the pipe here. A lot of times, just in the interest of cleanliness and getting a good solvent weld, I'll just take my rag and wipe the, uh, the drips off the bottom, and then look inside, make sure all your surfaces are properly primed, make sure there's no wet primer down in there. And then we'll take our glue, <clears throat> wipe off about half of it um, on the edge of our can, we don't want it dripping all over the place, and we don't want any more than we really need. Um, so take your dauber and go around it once, maybe twice, just to make sure that you've smeared glue all the way around the fitting. I've seen some guys that just you know go on and on and on and just wipe and wipe and wipe, and that's not really necessary, and sometimes you're wiping it back off um, once you've put it on there. So what I like to do is glue the pipe, and then maybe once run it around the inside of the fitting so that you're giving a little bit of lubrication and a little bit of extra glue down in there to form a bead. Okay, and so uh, as soon as you put that glue on both surfaces, it's going to start to dry pretty quickly, especially this blue wet or dry type of cement. Um, so as soon as you do, you press it in all the way until it hits the nest back here or that little lip inside the socket. And as you're putting it in, give it a quarter inch uh, a turn as it's going into the socket. And what you're doing is smearing that glue just to make sure that if you weren't accurate, you know, all the way around it and what you put it in and smear it, then you're going to end up with a proper distribution of glue inside the joint. And before that glue dries, take your rag and then wipe up the excess glue off of your joint here. For one, it's just neater. Um, and that's one of the ways that I identify my work is that pretty much everybody else in my market, except for one or two other people out there, are pretty sloppy. So I can look at somebody else's work and know that it wasn't mine just from the simple fact that I wipe off every single joint that I do. Now, let's uh, talk about a few other things here. If you're working over top of pipes or a repair that you've already done or some existing things down here, um, whether it's just pipes or a valve or anything, we want to prevent our primer and our glue from dripping down onto existing stuff. The primer can compromise an existing joint, okay? Um, and then also the glue, if it drips down and it's on this thin wall pipe, it can cause a bubble to happen on this because it's pretty hot chemically as it goes. And this thin wall pipe can get a hole, um, rise up on it, and then eventually burst. So that's one of the reasons that I wipe everything off, but also make sure that if you drip onto any other pipe, wipe that off as well. Uh, and especially, you know, with the uh, primer, if you have to go right over top of things that you've already done or some, some uh, existing fittings, take your rag and lay it down over top of that stuff if you've got to do it over so you can keep this from dripping on it. Now, here's another thing. If you're just putting together some parts and you're going to make a, uh, a repair down in a hole or something like that, but you're just setting up doing your thing, gluing your parts together, preparing for the, um, for the weld, and you're doing something like this, once you make the weld, turn it vertical um, so that you're not getting the glue that runs down into the unglued portion of your fitting. 
Um, if you're not paying attention and you're just putting things together one at a time uh, in place, you can have some glue that will run out from this weld that we made. It will run out into the socket here. So if you see that, you need to wipe it out, take some primer and get that glue off of there. Or like I said to begin with, if you're just putting them together out here on the ground, you know, hold it upright. It may run down a little bit on the inside, but what I try to do is just kind of hold it here and just make sure that if it dries, it's going to dry right there. Um, one of the things that you can do to prevent this is not putting too much glue on it. I want you to put enough, but experience will get you to the point to where, you know, you're taking about half of that glue off the dauber when you put it on there and then getting a proper smear around the outside of the pipe and on the inside of the fitting. So all of these things, you know, hopefully will keep you uh, from harming anything else you've done while making a good solvent fitting as you go. There's one last point that I'd like to make about putting together a solvent weld or fitting together two pieces of pipe. And it's a situation that comes up sometimes. That maybe it's a manufacturing defect or a little bit of variation, but sometimes the pipe might be slightly smaller than it's supposed to be, or sometimes the socket of a fitting might be just a fraction of a millimeter larger than it's supposed to be. And when you put the pipes together, the pressure of the glue in the fitting pushes the pipes back apart. So my advice is, is when you're putting these together and as you force the pipe into the fitting here, of course you're giving it that quarter turn, but hold, once you get it all the way into the nest, hold it for just a second so that glue can kind of set up and not force it back out. I, I see it a lot of times and we do repairs to where the pipe is only partially down in the socket, maybe a third of the way or a half of the way. And um, it may hold for a little while, but if I'm there replacing it, then obviously it didn't do the trick. But the point that I want to make here is just sometimes a, a hold for just a second will be enough for that glue to fit up and keep it from pushing the pipe back out of the fitting. You'll kind of get the, the feel of it, especially if you're using the same batch of fittings and pipe. You'll kind of know whether or not it's tight or after the first one or two that you do, you'll feel it kind of loose and see that pipe getting pushed back out of the socket there. So let's take a look at a couple of videos that I've done here. And um, these are in different places, different situations, uh, but let's take a look.